This is two months of development of a custom game engine in C++. In the first month, I had the bare minimum set up to render 3D models in a 3D scene. And this month is more or less also about infrastructure. I implemented a thread-based job system and some mouse picking on the screen. I can also use Lua to load configuration files. We don't have scripting just yet, but we can definitely start using Lua as a configuration language. Let's first talk about the job system performance. Now, a job system is a system that allows multiple units of work to be executed concurrently. There are a few ways to set up a job system in C++, and I chose to go with the thread-based job system. Basically, we have worker threads that execute jobs in the background. There are some limitations of a thread-based job system compared to a fiber-based job system, but the current setup is easier to maintain and we can always improve on it later. I think it is easier to explain how the job system works by visualizing the performance with a profiler. I have integrated the Tracy profiler. Tracy is a pretty famous profiler for frame-based applications such as video games. If we start up the application and release build now, we can see that the profiler starts capturing frames. We can close the application for now and let's inspect the frame chase. I want to show how the job system helps with faster startup time. Here we can see that the first frame takes 1.76 seconds and each horizontal track is a thread running in parallel. And we can see that the first track is already labeled main thread here. And we have uh, five other worker threads that are doing work basically. And here the main thread is dispatching work for the worker thread to consume. Here we can see that uh, there are two worker threads handling the cube map creation. This is the skybox that we have. We have two skybox, one for the day and one for night. And another three tracks, another three worker threads are preparing the 3D model. And if we zoom in a little closer, we can see that the most of the time is spent deserializing bitmaps, which is just the textures in the 3D model. Deserialization is just a fancy word for loading objects from the disk into RAM. We can see that the main thread is waiting for all worker threads to complete, and this is the synchronization times, uh, almost 800 milliseconds. And after the startup, we can see that uh, we have individual frames here, like about one millisecond frames, basically. Uh, one millisecond frames would be around a thousand frames per second. We can also see the VK wait for fences function. This is basically implying that the application is GPU bound, which means that the CPU has completed work and is waiting for the GPU to return. Now let's talk about mouse picking for a moment. Mouse picking is just the process of clicking somewhere in the screen and then selecting an object. Here we have three objects in the scene, and if I click somewhere in the screen, I should properly select which object I am clicking on. And as you can see, we have a outlining shader that properly highlights whatever object is currently being selected. And it works pretty nice in my opinion, even if the object is occluded behind another object, you can still see the highlighted object. And the mouse picking should still work correctly based on where you click. The mouse picking is uh, based on a compute shader. And there are quite a few ways to do this. And I've doing the pixel perfect way where we render each object's ID into a render target. And then I'm using a compute shader to pick whatever ID is stored in that pixel. And currently it's a little bit silly that we can select objects, but we can't modify its transform. That's because I haven't implemented gizmos yet. And that is probably the next milestone. We need gizmos so that we can modify the transform of an object. The last thing I wish to include in this devlog is the integration of Lua. Lua is a lightweight scripting language that is quite popular in game dev. Now, to be fair, there isn't really any reason for us to implement scripting right now because the engine is at such an early phase and there really isn't any features. 
but we can definitely start using Lua as a configuration language. So here I have a Lua configuration file. It is a proper Lua script. The extension is .lua. And here I am using this Lua program to store some of the attributes of my application. For example, I can modify the window size or set the window title here. And this is evaluated when I first open the program. So I guess we can try out the window size here. It's 900 by 900. It's read from this value. And also I can sort of set the window title at runtime here. If I change this and you can see it reflects here. I actually have a file watcher that monitors changes. So whenever I change the configuration, some of the attributes could be hot reloaded. And since this is a proper Lua program, I could actually define functions here, right? I can, for example, define a function, get app name takes a, I guess, string as input. And we can do any funny things to this. For example, we can turn the string to uppercase and concatenate a exclamation mark, I guess. And we return this. And this configuration file could be calling functions like right now. We can call uh, get app name on this. And when we save this, you can see that the title is updated here. It's hot reloaded, right? So subscribe, please. And this is one of the nice things about using Lua as a configuration language because Lua is a programming language and you can do whatever funny stuff you want to do with it. That's about it for this month. I know it isn't super hyped up, but this is game engine development and the first few months are really about laying a solid foundation, such as job systems, file watchers, and user interface stuff. It's not flashy, but it's honest work, and these foundational systems will decide how easy or difficult it is to add stuff in the future. I'm currently working on the retained mode user interface and the gizmo, after that, we may have something resembling an editor like you would expect in a game engine. Anyways, that's about it for month two. If you are interested in C++ programming and game dev in general, please leave a comment or subscribe, and I'll see you later next month.